it, you know, our personalities and our temperament are malleable. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think that you can't say or discredit the fact that it isn't a thing. Mm. This, and this, 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 this is no. my thing. So I'm not discrediting that it isn't a thing. Right. But what I'm saying is that. It's, so what, it's, what are you saying? What are you saying? So <laughs> let me, let me <laughs> Tell land. Tell me what you're saying. Let then. me land. So what I'm saying is that it's a thing only in as far as we we make the choice to to say that that is part of our identity and that is who I am. Welcome back, guys, to uh, another episode um, of, we just call it Theo and Prince. Yeah, we just yeah. call it Theo and Prince. Yeah. Um, so today, was, I mean, I guess we're, we're still on this, the, the transactional analysis book. Yeah. And I mean, there, there's so many principles and so many theories, which I think is um, applicable to, to life in yeah. general. Yeah. It's just like a, a massive life book, you know, like a formula on how to and there's, there's no there's no formula out there on how to you know mm. um, maneuver yourself in life. You just learn mm. as and when you go along. But I think who was I think the 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 great philosopher Socrates once said, you know, mm. the unexamined life is not worth living. And I, so I think, ooh, <laughs> can you say that one more time? <laughs> the unexamined life is not worth living. Okay. Mm. So I think mm. I, I think that having a, um, a a a kind of like a formula sometimes does help. Mm. that's help you to sort of like you know um, maneuver your way around certain things and mm. so today we're talking about this section in the book and it's mainly about relationships where we've got to mm. um the parent adult child and and their functions their functions in relationships yeah no for sure and like you said you know this this we're gonna, we're gonna go into the discussions but in order to make sense of some of the stuff we're gonna talk about you definitely need to watch the first episode which has all the bits about what an adult actually means and what a child actually means mm -hmm. and you know when you understand those I guess definitions mm -hmm. then the discussions we'll have will make a lot more sense yeah yeah. so if you haven't go watch the first episode mm -hmm. uh, if you have and you're here after watching that good on you mm -hmm. let's get it um, so yeah I mean right off the bat um, you talked about relationships yeah uh, to begin with and how relationships um kind of that the 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 way this book talks about relationships and and how relationships first start off mm -hmm. and uh before previously reading a bit about relationships and how you know a lot of times people can go into relationships without analyzing what the compatibility is between the two people and can make that decision solely based on that kind of initial childlike state which is a state of um, love or maybe a, just just a state of you know stroking from this individual right and then you end up liking this person because of how they look how they make you feel and you don't take into account a lot of the uh, the, the differences which can become a problem later on down the line and this book kind of talked about um how you know um, eric byrne the author of the book when he was in therapy with a lot of couples they then begin to um, find the differences and the similarities in their parent, adult and child uh, egos and recordings. And these differences and similarities then allow them to understand the relationship better, allow them to emancipate the adults, analyze relationships and, you know, allowed for longevity or allowed for a solution. <clears throat> if that wasn't, if that was divorced, then so be it. But if it wasn't, then they were able to carry on a relationship much better. Mm. Um, yeah, so that thing, you know, that was briefly a little bit of what he touched on. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so that, I think the, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, essentially you, you want to be at a place where I guess the, the adult is, um, is the one that regulates, let's say, emotions from the child and then a cake teachings of the parent mm -hmm. in relation to, you know, different relationships, um, that you, you, you go through and, I think it's very good. I think very. You know, I think you know with, with most, most relationships. I think um, you would go into um, into it with a the child in in many cases, sort of like you know, is is very dominant. I mm. think I, I think so. Anyway, mm. I think so. So as so the parent, but the child is very dominant in that you go into the relationships with you know your your feelings. You know, I, I guess I guess that you you kind of get some kind of validation from. Um, 
the the, the, the partner. So it says, in the, it says in the book that everybody's in a I'm not okay position mm. as a child. As, predominantly as a child, you want that stroking, right? So mm. there's that stroking and unstroking we talked about. Mm. So I think that um, once you get that stroking from, let's say, your, the, the partner or whoever it is you want to go into the relationship with, mm. um, you can sort of like negate that adult, mm. yeah. <laughs> the adult part. So the adult part is the, the adults are the one that actually would regulate or kind of um, appraise this this feeling to mm. see to see whether or not this feeling is legit or not. Mm. You know, um, and then go into it from there. Yeah, yeah. I give an example of a, a girl who got in a relationship with this guy. Yeah. And this guy was, I guess, to this girl, this guy was a Greek god or something which was, you know, she never felt herself because of, she felt she wasn't okay. She felt herself in a relationship with this guy. He was so good looking and that kind of made her feel okay. Mm. So in a sense, it was like, I'm not okay, but I'll be okay if, or I'm okay because I'm in a relationship with this guy who's so mm. good looking. Yeah. However, apart from looks, they had nothing else in common. Okay. So they couldn't conversate. They couldn't have deep, discussions yeah she was more of an introspective person he was more um surface level and a bit mani manipulative and right. all these things these kind of childlike traits mm. whereas she was a bit more mature um and they couldn't really have a conversation about anything else mm. so that was an example about an example of those those kind of dynamic that you find yourself in yeah and i think we've we've all been there right where you've been with someone or you you like you're talking to somebody and sometimes you just can't get the conversation going. Yeah, yeah. Like you think it's a good-looking person. You think they're, you know, cute and whatnot. But there's something lacking. Right? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. In terms of, <laughs> right, is that story you want to... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, there's something lacking in terms yeah. of that, you know, relationship. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then you can flip the other way as well where... Like, look, there's, some, there's people that I've met in my life, right? Some some girls, right? That, for lack of a better word, they're not the best looking girls in, in the world. You know what I mean? Like, they're not, <laughs> they're not 10 up. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But there's something there that, they're, they're pretty, don't get me wrong, but there's something there. Like, we have conversation and you can go deep. We can talk about anything. And sometimes you realize that that personality you know, you can you can end up liking and falling in love with that personality, and I guess that I guess when you can find a good a good balance, the perfect middle ground, mm. where you can find some, you can find you can get to a stage where you can get to love a personality, then there's a lot of similarity in terms of your adult, mm. because the adult is that analytical part of you, right? And you can have analytical conversations, and you can dive deep, and you're on each other's can, level. Can 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 the personality cater to the the child. So the um, so if you meet somebody, somebody who's got a very you know outgoing type personality or a very likable type personality, um, mm. can that can you sort of like you know blindly be led on by that person's personality as opposed to mm. your 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 adult sort of like so? Um, well, I guess my question is, can the child be struck by personality and personality only? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you meet somebody who's really funny. Yeah. And they make you laugh a lot. Okay. I guess that's somebody, yeah, somebody who's really kind and loving. I guess that, that could be the stroking aspect because mm -hmm. they're validating you yeah. and they're showing you attention and they're making you laugh. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, yeah, I think it can. It can. I think yeah. it can. Yeah. However, I think if, if there is a connection yeah on personality where you can both have conversations for a long period of times about things which are not merely surface level mm. you know about your values and those kind of things then it takes a step further yeah you know where your your adult is in play yeah because you're analyzing your values analyzing their values and then you're finding that connection there 100% yeah 100% I, agree. I think in order to have that um conversation or let, let's say for instance to like appraise certain teachings with you know somebody that let's say you just met and who's mm. got you know certain values and principles about certain things mm. um i would say that you've got to be in a i'm okay position or like the 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 adult ego would mm. be the one to let's say to appraise those those perceptions about certain things you mm. know so um you know um <clears throat> 
uh, you grew up in a certain, you know, society or um, you grew up uh, worshipping or, you know, in a certain kind of like religion, let's say, for instance, mm-hmm. right? And you never had the opportunity to appraise why you were born into this particular religion mm. or why this re- religion says you can't go and marry somebody from a different religion, mm. right? And I think that um, in, in order for you to, let's say, for instance, um, get along with somebody or have that in-depth conversation with someone that you just met mm. who is also from a different religion that your religion does not agree with, mm. I, th- I think you would have to be in an uh, okay position or the adult will have to take place for you to have mm. that that conversation for it to actually go somewhere. And I think mm. I think it's very I think it's very essential, you know, mm. um, for any type of um, relationship or any type of interaction mm. to be in that position. But it takes a okay person mm. or somebody in, uh, uh, um, who's very, I guess, introspective or whose adult is more mm. dominant or at play to um, to have that conversation, that conversation on that level. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be able to, yeah, uh, absolutely. Because, because it talks about you know some of the games you can fall at, you can fall, at, um, you can you can fall into some of the traps you can fall into. Yeah. If you do end up in that relationship and both your analytical adult is in a play, mm-hmm. such as you know my religion is better than yours. And you know um, things in that in that in that vein. Yeah, hundred percent. And that can be, I guess, very toxic, and that can lead to the te- deterioration of a lot of um, relig- relationships. Um, relationships. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the question is, you know, because being with somebody who who, okay, okay, how do I phrase this? Take it back to religion, and like you said, the teachings that you are you are given from birth. Religion is one of those teachings that for a lot of people, it's not really something to analyze. I think it's the recording, but it's weird. Like my Google Chrome just pops up with add-ons every now and then. Yeah. But, um, what was I? Yeah, religion is not, religion, hmm. A lot of the time when we're young, we're taught religion and we grow up and we don't analyze what this is like you said it's that archaic parent teaching and um a lot of people go through their life just never analyzing it mm-hmm. you know it's just i'm christian or i'm a muslim or i'm this and this is this is this is it you know yeah. like and it becomes <clears throat> a part of your identity a strong part of your identity and who you are a lot of people grow up analyze it and decide you know what it's not for me and kind of move it aside. But I guess for those individuals who grow up, analyze it and become one and accept it as part of identity, and they can see that it's this thing that I have analyzed and accepted, maybe they may be in a better position to be in a relationship with someone who is of a different religion, who can also, who has also been through that journey. Mm -hmm. Because you both now have analyzed what this is, this thing that you call part of you, what this is, and I guess how you, how you, how that interplay happens going yeah. forward. Okay, well, can can you can you though be um, in a position where you haven't analyzed this mm. religion or these teachings, mm. and then get into a relationship with somebody who has not, or who has analyzed it, mm-hmm. and is willing to have that conversation with you? Mm. You can, but then. It takes. It needs you to. I reckon. Before you start, when you start a conversation, then you need to be able, or you need to be mm-hmm. somebody who actually wants to take the step to analyze so, these yeah, things. Yeah. Because I think if you have two people who haven't analyzed why they have this religion and they get into a relationship, I think it's really difficult. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think the the yeah. I think that's very. Really, I think going back to the the transaction I said, I think that's why the is important for the so if, if the adult is if the adult is contaminated yeah then i think that the um the um is it would be difficult i think mm. to to have this conversation so mm. if you know and i think going back to um the the chat i can't remember what chapter i said mm. or what example it gave mm. to how the adult was contaminated um 
Um, okay, so let's use the the cop. I think that gave an example. Yeah, like all police are bad. All police are bad. Yeah. You know, fuck the feds. Yeah, okay. all those, all those <laughs> teachings, right? Okay, you know, yeah, all that stuff about police. Yeah, so you obviously you mind my language, um, but yeah, all that stuff about those teachings, and then you grow up and you see a good policeman doing something good for a community, mm-hmm. but straight away, you know, there's that contamination of your analytical brain. Yeah, because you think to yourself, nah, policemen are bad, so he must be bad as well. So he must be yeah. bad as well. Yeah. So I guess that's a contamination. Yeah, that would be a contamination of the adults, I guess. Um, uh, but some, some policemen are... No, no, but I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But that would be, be a contamination of the the adult, mm. right? Um, so so from, from that perspective, it's difficult to have a conversation mm. with somebody to challenge those particular... Those, d- d- those thoughts, even though some policemen may be bad and mm. some may be good. Mm. Um, and I guess... If if, if if I guess if a system if if it, if it's a system that is you know um, that is bad it makes all of them complicit okay now nah, here's me no but mum some police are good and some police are not bad right yeah. so not all of them are bad but I think the yeah so it it it'd be difficult yeah so if the person's adult is contaminated from that perspective it'd be difficult to have that conversation yeah um, as to why I think. As to you know, to challenge, let's say that particular religion mm. or the um, the teachings mm. that come as a result of mm. these religions. Now, not to go against any religion, but I'm saying that you know, in order to have a conversation, mm. it's, it's important to be at that stage yeah. for that conversation to happen. To happen, yeah, yeah no, absolutely, absolutely. And I guess that's where it talks about the emancipated adult, yeah, and that being uh, the real crux of mm-hmm. any relationship. Yeah. Um, any, any healthy yeah. relationship. Yeah, yeah. The emancipated that was very important. You, you know, on the flip side, they did mention that. Okay, so uh, let's assume there's like there's <laughs> there's two um, yeah there's, there's two people in the relationship. Mm. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, there could be three. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Or one. People. Some people are asexual these days. So. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> But um, let's assume there's, there's two people. Yeah. There is two people. Yeah. And they are both from a um, a not okay position or they are, let's say they are, their child is very dominant in terms of, you know, um, <clears throat> in terms of of the relationships. And the, the, the relationship is just like full of like games. Mm. Um. He didn't say something like if, if one if one party then goes to counseling, relationship counseling, mm. right? Then the relationship becomes and if that party is, let's say, you know, heals and becomes like, you know, a better version of themselves, the relationship the, the relationship then becomes lopsided. Mm. So <laughs> so this uh, this this person must go back and then basically analyze everything using the adult mm. and you know be a bit sort of like you know analytical and appraise all the you know archaic teachings and not playing any games mm. again and then the husband will be trying to play games and be thinking mm. what the hell is What's wrong man like do you know what yeah. I mean like since you know what I mean and it's, it's, it's just like mm. you know since my, my, my wife you know became happier and mm. and, and and is able to you know um, check her emotions mm. my marriage is just like you know you know um, it's not the same yeah it's not the same anymore <laughs> Do you know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah. so I think he he was just saying that it's best for two people to go into um into uh into relationship relationship counseling. Yeah. Which I questioned. Mm, yeah, you did question that in, yeah, yeah, to be honest. I think it's I think there's something in that though to I guess to any relationship. Mm. Right. So let's take me and you for instance. Mm. Let's say I've read this book and this book is amazing. It talks about how, you know, all anger stems from or all all disagreements stem from childhood yeah. and that the reason you are the way you are is because you because you were or something happened to you as a kid and now I, I now come as the enlightened individual to come and tell you why this isn't working out mm. right I guess I guess in that situation my behaviour has not changed in that I feel like I'm emancipated mm. and I feel like you don't get it and you're, you're unemancipated right. so therefore I need to now come and teach you 
like, I need to come and show you what I've gone. Like, but uh, but isn't that the whole point of transactional analysis? That okay, if you're, um, if you get, if I guess if the adult is emancipated, mm-hmm. or if you get the the whole point of transactional analysis, mm-hmm. is that you'd want to ex- essentially come and communicate with me on an adult to adult basis. Mm-hmm. So that would essentially reduce the the potential of friction within that particular relationship. Absolutely. But the problem comes when the person who thinks they've understood it mm. comes on a parent to child uh, I guess yeah, yeah. you know what I mean yeah I guess if you, if you come like, if you come on that tip then you haven't really truly understood you understood what's going on right the, the transaction transaction yeah. analysis yeah so I think the, the there were some examples of um, parent a cake recordings I'd say mm. where the um, the individual let's say for instance in a relationship mm is very grumpy let's say for instance every morning mm. and would say something like um I w- i'm always grumpy in the morning until i've had my coffee mm. so <laughs> that gives that person like kind of like um the the yardstick mm. to to be a bit you know um rude or you know grumpy in the morning uh until they like yeah drank their their particular coffee rather than the the person actually question or you know uh, analyzing why mm. why did they, did they need to you know take coffee be, before they before actually okay. you know uh, become okay and I think I think we're all guilty of that right mm. <laughs> you know um, so so there's that as well and I think there's there's also another one of like you know someone saying oh um, Nah, it, that, that's just the way I am. Mm, that's just the way I am, right? <laughs> this is something that you know. I got, I got, I got a little bones to pick with you on this one, man. Because in the mornings, you always say, you know what? I'm not a morning person, man. Like, I just, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just not a morning person. Yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, I really think that's a choice, man. You think I, so? I think, you, I think you don't choose. You choose not to be a morning person. I think. I, look, I, 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 yeah. I think there's sometimes when I wake up and I do certain things. I think it depends. Mm. It depends on what I'm doing here. Mm. But I also think that everyone's got a temperament, mm. right? Mm. And I think that your temperament definitely decides, I guess, your character, your personality. Yeah, it's, it's it's one of those things that. Mm. I've, got, I've, got theory, I've got a theory on this, right? And a lot of people are going to agree with it, right? But I think I think you know, I think it, it's. <clears throat> It's a temperament, yes, but I feel like it becomes an identity because of habitual, a, 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 an habitual like self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. And this is, how, this is what I think about a lot of you know habits and and identities and styles. You know, like mm. I'm a coffee person. Ah, oh, like the guy said, you know, I can't without a cup of coffee, I can't function. Mm-hmm. Or you know, ah. Oh, I just need you know without without a shot, you know, I'm just and I'm good to go. Right. You know, shot of espresso, woo, I'm ready to go, let's get it, you know? Mm. But I feel like that is an, an identity that, that that you know, we, through, through habits and through practice, we, you know, see ourselves as this thing. So I feel like it's almost a choice. Right. Yeah. So, so you know, like whenever we have this discussion, you bring up the temperament thing. Yeah. I don't fully agree with it, man. You know? Because I think, I think it's, you know, as a choice. Now, you know, that is... That's the theory that I have, right? And obviously, I'm sure there's other theories there, you know. Mm. But um, yeah, right. I see. And I, and I do I do think you know genetics obviously play a factor, but I think there's in terms of our personalities and what we can change. I think it's the the, the boundaries are, are limitless. Yeah. So so I, if you're saying that it's not a temp- it's a choice, then. Mm. I mean, personality really isn't really a choice, is it? Mm. I mean, you can choose how you yeah. react to certain situations, and you know, um, certain things would, I guess, motivate you mm. to um, think outside the box or behave mm. in a way that isn't ordinarily what you mm. what you are. But mm. I think I, I don't think we can discredit that personality. People are born with certain personalities. I, I don't think we can discredit that fact. <laughs> You know? Okay. Yeah. You know, so I, I think mm. t- I think ten- temperament is a thing. It really mm. is. You know, mm. I, I don't think I think, you know, um, every every person has got a certain way about them and a certain way they do certain things. You mm. know, um, 
but I don't think it should that should be the cap I don't think it should um, render you sort of like you know um, or kind of like limit your ability to you know um, go beyond mm. what you define as your temperament but I think everyone has got a temperament <laughs> really, really, really. okay okay look look I think I think I think personality is like a muscle right I really think it is I think a lot of things that we do is like a muscle mm. the more you flex it the stronger it becomes. Mm-hmm. If you stay in your room all all year, right, and you you never go out, you flex the muscle of not going out and not interacting with people, and it becomes, and obviously it becomes harder to go out and be the outgoing person, yeah, because you don't do it often, right. And so I feel what a lot of people do, and what Eric Byrne has alluded to, is that we become, you know, we say this is who we are. You know, the, the fact that you can go to <laughs> the fact that you can go to the gym, <laughs> Let me, the, the, you're right. the, the, the fact that you can go to the gym right. and build muscles right. doesn't always necessarily mean you have a body looking like the Rock. Of course not. So I, I think but that you can the, become a bodybuilder and you can. You can. Become muscular. I mean, you are, yeah. to, to an extent. Yeah. You know, um, only so far as your 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 makeup. Mm-hmm. Is gonna let you. So mm-hmm. I think only to a, to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. So I think you, it, 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 you know our personalities and our temperament are malleable. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I think that you can't say or discredit the fact that it isn't a thing. Mm. This, and this, 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 this no. is my thing. So I'm not discrediting that it isn't a thing. Right. But what I'm saying is that. It's, so what, it's, what are it's you saying? What, what are you saying? So <laughs> let me let me <laughs> Tell land. Tell me what you're saying. Let then. me land. So what I'm saying is that it's a thing only in as far as we we make the choice to to say that that is part of our identity and that is who I am. Mm, no, I, I think I... Because... I, th- I think you know, I, I agree that... Yeah, we have to make a choice to say that this, this is who I am. Mm. Right? Mm. And this is my identity. But it doesn't mean that if this is who I am and this is my identity, mm-hmm. then that's, that's, a, that's a be your end all. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So, yes... Um, someone comes and says, "Yeah, look, I'm not a morning person, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> or, or, right? Or I'm a morning person, right? Right? I, I think you can kind of like adapt. Look, I adapt in the morning. Like if I've got some stuff to do, I need mm-hmm. to go to work, I need to go for a run. Mm-hmm. I will wake up. But if there's times when I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like you know, I, I I can sort of like you know, I can stay in bed a little bit longer if I feel mm-hmm. like you know, there, there's there really isn't there really isn't a point." Mm. But, but that's the thing though you know you, you use the word adapt yeah that's what I'm saying that's what I'm saying so that it's, so it's, you, you, it's, you, can, you can sort of like mend it you can, yeah 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 that's but then, but then that, are, are you saying we don't have a personality is that what you're saying are you saying we don't have a personality <laughs> that's, do that's, have not a that's not what I'm saying that's not what I'm saying okay look uh, we can all adapt our personalities right yeah. and we can all no, no, okay look the word adapt is what I'm alluding to mm-hmm. because it you know no, I agree with you on that point. No, yeah. yeah, it's like it makes it difficult for anyone to 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 believe that they can change, mm. because it makes it like you said, it's, it's self deterministic. Right. In that approach, it's like this is what I am. Right. Okay. And I can adapt to do this, but when it gets a bit too hard, you know what? Mm-hmm. That's not really who I was, anyways. Right. <laughs> and I get you. I get you. And I, yeah, yeah. I get you. I yeah. get you. And I think yeah, yeah. I think we should be hampered by yeah. you know um, by these thoughts. And I think you know um, it's essential that we um, we try to ensure that it's not the absolute you know mm. um, thing. But yeah. But um, yeah. Is there anything with me? Should we wrap it um, up? I have, yeah, I think that was pretty much a lot of what you were saying. I think that's. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I think we should end it with that French quote. I don't know if you yeah, remember. Go for it. Wait, where is it? I think you should say it because you said it so brilliantly. Uh, if I could I said find it. so it. brilliantly, you know. <laughs> where is it now? Probably a few pages back. I should have highlighted it. Thought I did. Oh, there we go. The Probably. old French. Somewhere over there. Somewhere over there. Mic on two. So oh, I'm I'm, I'm gonna. Almost. Yeah. Laptop is almost dead out here. 
All right, guys, thank you for listening. Mm. Um, but I'm going to end the, the podcast with a, a quote, a fantastic quote uh, from, 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 from the French. Oui, oui. Yeah, so, so, so an old French song goes, mm. La mort est... Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, <you're laughs> <laughs> Serious face. An old French song goes, mm. L'amour est l'enfant. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, come on, man. Ah, it's funny. Yo, I'm still playing this over minutes. I gotta wrap this up, man. An old, an, an old French song goes, mm. L'amour est l'enfant de la la bête. What does that mean? Which means love is the child of freedom. Mm. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the world so good. So sweet. So sweet. Thank you for thank you for listening. Thank you for the word so sweet. Yes. Mm-hmm.